Hello to everybody. Thanks for your time. Before turning it over to Glenn for the demo, I want to take a minute to provide a little background on monitoring in the TIBCO space. Just a little bit of background on SL. We've been around for more than 25 years at this point and have a very solid customer list in a number of different industries. We also partner with a number of big software vendors, including TIBCO. There are a lot of companies in the monitoring space. What makes us unique is that we specialize in integration middleware. We monitor the services and applications and the middleware they run on. SL's RTView product complements the TIBCO admin and monitoring tools. The TIBCO admin monitoring tools are primarily designed for administration and management and generally provide a basic level of monitoring. Admin tools also do not persist historical data, including the metrics and alert history. You also have to use a different admin console for each product, although the TIBCO T product can monitor several TIBCO products. And thirdly, admin tools generally only view one server at a time, so you'll need to navigate around a multiple server system to get a feel for what's happening at that particular moment in time. What we provide with RTView for the TIBCO space is the ability to consolidate all of your monitoring across your different TIBCO technologies. You can see hotspots before they turn into larger issues, requiring a larger team to troubleshoot. And you can make monitoring a simple part of your daily routine. Here's a list of the different technologies that we can monitor with RTView. As you can see, we provide strong support for TIBCO. We also support a number of non-TIBCO technologies as well. There are two different editions of RTView, the middleware edition and the enterprise edition. You can start small with the middleware edition and then step up to the enterprise version if you need that extra capability at any time. Glenn will walk through those capabilities in his demo now. Glenn, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Well, thank you, Ted, and uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, I'll now provide a short product demonstration that will introduce you to the features and the functions of the new RTView platform. Those of you already familiar with RTView will notice a number of changes made to the product over the last few months. These changes are intended to make setting up, maintaining, and using RTView even easier and more intuitive thus increasing the benefit of RTView to you and to your user groups. This new look and feel includes additional high-level summary screens with a greater emphasis on analytics versus displaying data. This means that you'll spend less time isolating a failing component, which means that you'll be more proactive and you'll provide a reduced repair time. Also, the more intuitive look and feel leads to a reduced learning curve, which combined with a greater consistency in the screens across the different technologies, makes it easier for your application teams to become more self-supporting. You'll see RTV is now packaged as two different editions. The middleware edition, which is simpler and more focused, it's intended primarily for operation teams who are responsible for maintaining the health of the technology stacks. And then there's the Enterprise Edition, which provides the same operational capability as the Middleware Edition, but is intended to, extended rather, to monitor the application as well as the operational health. And we'll see how that works later on. In addition, the Enterprise Edition allows users to monitor a wide array, wider array of technologies. So that said, let's start the demo. Initially, we're going to be looking at the middleware edition. This is the one that's primarily intended for operational users. Got a much cleaner, uh, much more intuitive uh, interface. You'll see that there's a selection of icons here, each icon represents the health state of the underlying technology. So this happens to be EMS, and you'll see that the entire EMS domain is being monitored. You'll see we have four warning alerts, which is why this icon is yellow, but we have zero critical alerts. You'll see we've also surfaced a key indicator 
In this case, we're looking at the active versus the total number of servers. So we have four, 14 active servers, 29 total servers. As we move across, you'll see that we have BW5. BW5 is in a red condition. So you'll see that here we have active versus total engines. We have 24 active engines, 29 total engines. You'll see we have four critical alerts and zero warning alerts. You'll see the same pattern is, repeat, is repeated across all of these icons. And occasionally you'll see icons changing condition, changing state. This indicates that, that the, there was a problem, an underlying problem with the uh, one of the one of the uh, perhaps app nodes or one of the applications which is which is corrected itself it's no longer in a, a warning state okay so from here I can drill down and start looking at in, in a more detailed view at the components that support this particular technology so when I drill down to this level, I'm just looking at all of the EMS servers. So a total of 29 servers, 14 of which are active. Okay. I can scroll down and easily see which of the servers is having a problem. Happens to be this uh, SL Demo uh, 3. If I scroll across, I'll be able to get a lot of information about that service. So number of disks, number of uh, read, writes, messages in, messages out, rate of message uh, received, pending messages, huge amount of detail there at that level. I can drill into that server. And now what I'm looking at is a single server summary view just for that individual EMS server. So remember, I started off looking across the entire monitored stack. I then saw there was a problem with uh, within the EMS domain. I'm now, uh, I've isolated it down to this single server and this single topic. Okay, but before I do that, let me just show you that because this is, this is a format that's repeated uh, across RT view, the top section is all current information. So we have asset information, alert information, information about, in this case, the persistent zone with async storage, synchronous storage. Of course, it's a messaging system, so we're very interested in the amount of messages coming in, amount of messages going out, and the amount of pending messages. So this is the top section. The bottom section is devoted to history. So here I'm looking at one hour. I could extend it out to seven days, or I could shrink it down to two minutes. I also have the option of choosing a calendar pick list. So if I wanted to go back uh, maybe four weeks or so and look at a particular time period, I'd be able to do that. Okay. But as we saw, we've got a problem with topics. So from any one of these, I can drill down and take a, a look at that list. So here's the topics list. I can choose one of the topics. I can drill into that. And now I'm looking at some detailed information about that topic. Again, this is the current state with some asset-based information. And below I've got the history. Okay. If this topic runs on multiple servers, I could uh, click on that and I can see how this, this topic is uh, behaving on, across the different uh, EMS servers. Let's return to the overview screen. And you'll see that we've got, uh, as I said, the different technologies. I have the ability to drill in through any of these icons, but I could also use this navigation tree down the left-hand side. So this is another new screen. This is the EMS summary screen. We've got four key indicator cards here. EMS, active EMS servers, largest number of producers, largest number of consumers, largest number of connections. So this is information that's aggregated across the EMS environment. 
Over here, I've got some selected charts. So you can see this chart happens to be servers with the highest connection count, but I could switch and look at the servers with the highest pending message count or async DB size. And down here, I've got what is now the, now the, the familiar uh, trend chart. So this is inbound, outbound message count. I could switch over and perhaps look at pending messages. Okay, so this summary screen is repeated for all of the different technologies. So let's take a look at BW5. I can drill into this. I can see all the engines running across all the servers or I could choose a particular server. I could drill into any one of these servers and now I'm looking at a game at the top is all current state information. At the bottom is all historical information. So here I've got uh, detailed information about the engine, how long it's been running, how much memory, CPU, how many threads, etc. How many errors, how many processes. Over here I've got a miniature heat map that shows me by the color, uh, the average execution time and the size is driven by how many times the process has been created. And from here I can go down and look at the processes. I can look at it in a heat map form. Or I could look at it in a table form. And from this table I could drill down and look at an individual process. How many times it's been created, how many times it's completed, what the error rate is. Execution time. So of course with BW processes we're, in, we're interested in, in performance. Okay, and in messaging we're interested in how many, you know, what the flow of messages uh, are over time. But here we're looking at execution time and elapsed time. So the min, max, average, current and rate. From there, I could go down, look at the activities. I can look at it in table form. And I could drill down and look at an individual activity. And get the same kind of screen. Okay. So this, this, uh, this behavior is repeated across all of the different technologies. But what I want to do now is switch over to the Enterprise Edition. And as I mentioned at the beginning, the Enterprise Edition introduces the idea of applications. And because we're looking at applications in this case, we're very interested in some of the peripheral systems. So our core set of TIBCO uh, components is well represented. But then we also have uh, visibility into the database systems, the application systems, the infrastructure systems, all of the different uh, systems that are used to support the TIBCO application set. Right, so that's very important here. We've got the same ability to look at it from an operational point of view, but we also can now start looking at applications. So we have the same drill down capabilities, the same set of screens, but you'll see along the top, we've got three new tabs. So we have the service tree tab, which shows us the applications. We've only got a couple here, order to cash and retail. We also have the infrastructure view, which is uh, more like the operational view, if you like. We have the service views, which allows us to see um, heat maps at a service level. So this happens to be the CRM service. We also have a custom tab, which is where we've been able to take the service model, which is managing and controlling all of these resources at an application level. And now I can start putting them into flow diagrams. So here you'll see I've got a flow diagram for order fulfillment as part of the CRM application. Okay, you'll see that uh, we can we can trace the relationship between the EMS topic, the BW engine, the process that's running, which then feeds into uh, additional topics. And there, of course, is the the Oracle database that that is an integral part of this application. 
Now, the, the Oracle database is there not because we're responsible. We're not the DBA. But obviously, the behavior of this Oracle database is going to be impacted by the behavior, by the behavior of our application and vice versa. So we need to, we need to know its condition. Okay. And then down here, we have the, the, the server level views, if you like. We have the BW server, EMS server, the VMware host, and the VMs. And from any of these, I could drill down and start looking at some of the screens that, that we looked at before. In this case, we're looking at the VMware host summary screen. We can see which host it is. This happens to be ESXi2. I can see that running on this host server, I've got 34 VMs, 14 of which are powered on, 12 of which are running. I can see information about when it was last rebooted. I can see the, the uh, aggregate CPU, the network information, the packets in, packets out, uh, memory utilization, disk utilization. All of this information is going to be of interest to me, even though I'm not the VMware administrator. I'm dependent upon this ESXi host. And then from here, I can drill in and start looking at all of the VMs, either running on that host or across all of the hosts. And then from there, I can drill in and start looking at an individual VM. Okay. So let's go back to the overview page. And uh, just to, to, to illustrate, this is a subset. This is a selection of the different technologies that we can monitor. So you'll see we have application servers. And the middle where we have, as you would expect, uh, the TIBCO uh, elements. But we also have Oracle Coherence, MQ, Solace. Actually, we have Kafka. That's not shown here. FTL. Under databases, we have Oracle, MySQL, uh, DB2, MongoDB. And then the last thing I want to show you is the processes. So what we're able to do is look across all of the JVMs that are running within the environment. So I can look at it in a heat map form. And the color of this will depend upon whether it's alert severity, alert count, or CPU. Uh, I'm able to, to change the criteria here very easily. I could look at it in a table view. And from this table view, I could drill in. And I could look and understand the, the JVM utilization. You'll see that I've got garbage collection, pool trends, system properties. All of this information. Uh, it's very difficult to get if you're um, you know, mon ma managing a middleware environment. You're not necessarily going to have access to these tools. And maybe you don't have the skill set to use some of those JVM tools. And so that's another benefit of RTView, which is that, that we bring that information and show it in a, in a familiar format. Okay, so that completes the, uh, that completes the, the demonstration. I hope... I hope uh, it's been of interest. I hope that you'll follow up and ask us to give you a more personalized view. And um, in a few minutes, we'll be giving you all of that contact information that you need. So once again, thank you very much.